What's up YouTube? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to continue the CompTIA Pen Test Plus learning path on TriHackMe. For today's video, we're going to cover the Metasploit introduction room, an introduction to the main components of the Metasploit framework. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing before we get started, let's go ahead and start our VM. It's located in task four. Let's go ahead and start the machine. Let that start up. And then let's go back to task one and start from here. Metasploit is the most widely used exploitation framework. Metasploit is powerful, is a powerful tool that can support all phases of penetration testing uh, from information gathering to post exploitation. There's two different versions of, uh, there's two different versions of Metasploit. There's Metasploit Pro and Metasploit Framework, which is the one we're going to use. We're not really going to go into Pro just because that's out of scope for this video. So the Metasploit version that we're using is an open source version that, that works from the command line. Um, so when you open up a terminal, everything we're going to do is going to be done here with, Met, with Metasploit. So the Metasploit framework is a set of tools that allows for information gathering, scanning, exploitation, exploit development, post exploitations, and other things, etc. Uh, while the primary usage is going to be focused mostly on the penetration testing domain, it can be used for exploit development and vulnerability research as well. So the main components of the framework can be summarized as, as the following MSF console, which is the main command line interface. And there's going to be modules that support such as exploits, scanners, payloads, etc. And then there's going to be standalone tools or just tools that can help with vulnerability, vulnerability research, vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, and so on. So for this room, we're going to cover the main components of Metasploit while providing you the solid foundation um, on how to find relevant exploits, set parameters, and exploit a vulnerable service on the target machine, which is what we will be doing in task number four. So now that we already deployed the VM, let's go ahead and hit complete, and let's move on to task number two. So for task number two, we're going to cover the main components of Metasploit. So we're going to launch Metasploit. We're going to launch the Metasploit console with MSF console. So let's go ahead and just run that here, just so you can see. So you'll type in, so you'll type in MSF console, and then that'll load the Metasploit framework. So you see, starting the Metasploit framework console usually takes like a few seconds to load, and sometimes you may see, you may see random junk in the output, you can you can really just ignore that. As long as you see the MSF6, which is going to be the latest version of Metasploit, and then this, this angle bracket. So you can go ahead and use the attack box for this, but um, I prefer to stick with our Kali host and connect to the TriHackMe platform via OpenVPN. So the console is the main interface for interacting with the Metasploit modules which performs specific tasks such as exploiting vulnerabilities, scanning targets, and brute forcing, and brute forcing attacks. So for exploit, exploit is just a code that exploits a vulnerability. And then vulnerability is a flaw in design, code, or logic that can expose confidential information or allowed code execution on the target system. Payload is an exploit that takes advantage of a vulnerability to get the desired result, which can either be getting access or information from the target. So that is when a payload will be needed. So now we're going to cover the different modules and categories. So let's open up our terminal again. Um, as you can see in the screenshot, they have the Metasploit framework in the opt directory. Um, by default, Kali will have the Metasploit framework in the user share. So you'll do CD user share Metasploit framework and then hit enter. So let's go ahead and navigate to modules. All right, now we're going to run the same command, which is going to be tree dash capital L1 in auxiliary. And this is going to show you everything in the auxiliary module. Let's go ahead and minimize this a bit. So we can have our framework right here. So now for encoders, signature based antivirus solutions and other security solutions detect threats by comparing suspicious, suspicious files to a database of known threats. Encoders do have limited success nowadays as antivirus solutions or AV solutions can perform extra check can perform extra checks to, det to detect malicious files on their system. 
So you can do the same thing, tree dash capital L one encoders, and then you'll see all the directories under encoders. Now for evasion, it's just kind of, it's kind of like encoders, except for evasion, now you're going to try to evade the antivirus software instead of encoding the payload. So same thing, tree dash L to evasion. And this will show you everything under the Windows evasion. And, and exploits, these are gonna be all the different types of exploits that you can use to attack a target system. So same thing, tree dash L one dash capital L one exploits. And there's 20 different directories and four files under the exploits module. And NOPs or NOPs, no operation, they don't really do anything. It's not, it's not really something that you need to know. They're, they often just, they're often just used as buffer to achieve consistent payload sizes. So you can do tree dash, tree dash capital L one nops. You probably won't use this a whole lot. Now payloads, um, exploits can leverage a vulnerability to send payloads such as a shell, malware, backdoor, or run commands. For example, when you're launching calc.exe, which is a calculator executable on Windows, remotely on the target system, shows that we can run commands. So a shell allows an interactive command line to be typed and executed on the target, on the target system. Metasploit offers the ability to send payloads that open the shells. So now we're going to clear everything out. Do tree dash capital L1 payload. So in the current version, there's also the adapters directory but we're just going to cover the three. So the single payload, the singles, they're responsible for setting up a connection channel between Metasploit and the target system. The stager is uploaded to the target system, then the rest of the payload stage is downloaded. This, is, this helps to reduce size of the payload compared to sending the full payload at once to the target system. And the stages is downloaded by the stager. Metasploit also has different ways to help you identify a single payload and a staged payload. For example, this is a single payload as shown by the, the single inline and everything else afterwards is placed with an underscore. So shell underscore reverse underscore TCP, which we see here is a staged payload. This has a slash 64 slash shell slash reverse TCP. So this is broken up by an inline, which is the forward slash. So the former is an inline or single payload as indicated by the underscores between the shell and reverse. While this, while this is a staged payload over here indicated by the forward slashes between X64 and then shell and reverse TCP. Think about it as executing these in different stages. And then the post or post module will be useful on the final stage of pen testing or the post exploitation portion. So let's go ahead and clear tree as capital L one post. And if you want to play around with this, feel free to, especially if you have your own Kali Linux instance or using the attack box, you can go ahead inside each of these directories and explore it a little bit more. On to the questions. What is the name of the code taking advantage of a flaw on the target system? That'll be the exploit. What is the name of the code that runs on the target system to achieve the attacker's goals or goal? That will be the payload. What are self-contained payloads called? Self-contained, think about it as single, self-contained. Single or singles is windows slash x64 slash pingback underscore reverse underscore tcp among singles or staged payload this will be a state this will be a singles just because the pingback and reverse is separated with an underscore rather than the inline or forward slash so this will be singles on to task number three so as mentioned earlier we'll be using we'll be using the MSF console to launch the Metasploit framework. So I'm just gonna go to my, so I'm just gonna go to my, try hack me directory real quick, and then launch MSF console, give it a second to run. We have the Metasploit console loaded now. So the Metasploit terminal 
works just like your regular, like the regular Linux commands. You can do ls and wherever, whatever folder you launched the meta, whatever folder you launched Metasploit out of. So, for example, our try hack me folder, you'll you'll see all the contents within that directory. So this basic pen testing, Burp Suite, Kenobi, all these are within my try hack me directory. So, for example, we can do clear to clear clear the terminal. And then you can you, you can use the help command to get help or to get help or information on a specific command. So for example, set command, which we'll be using here in a bit, you'll do help set to see information on how to use the, the set command exactly. And then you can run the history command to see the history of the different commands that we ran. So mine has a lot because I actually use this. We can clear that. So Another thing with, with, with the MSF console, there's auto tab complete for commands. So if you're doing HE, you can hit the tab to auto complete help Oops. and then clear that out. So MSF console is managed by context. So if you change the module, all parameter settings will be lost unless you set a global barrier. As an example, we'll use the MS 17 or eternal blue exploit. So once you type use exploit windows SMB MS 17 underscore 010 underscore eternal blue, this will change our prompt, the prompt. So let's go ahead and try it out. Use exploit windows SMB MS 17 underscore 010 eternal blue. And now we see that our prompt changed with setting. Now our prompt changed with the eternal blue set. If we switch to another module, so like a port scanner, we will have to set the R host value again, as well as changes that we made in context to the eternal blue exploit over here. And then if you go ahead and run a show options, we'll see all the different settings that we can set here. So our host, this will be the target host. So this will be the, the IP address, the IP side of notation, or a text file containing a, a list of targets that we can set. Our port by default will be set to port 445. It is required. SMB domain doesn't need to be specified. SMB pass, SMB user, those don't need to be specified as they're not required. Set by the no option. Verify architecture and verify target is set to true and is required, but by default, we don't need to set this since Metasploit does it automatically. And by default, using the internal blue exploit will set the interpreter reverse TCP payload as we see over here by the windows slash x64 slash interpreter slash reverse underscore TCP. This will also set the three different settings by default to thread for exit function and then or exit technique and then L host, which will be our usually it'll be our Ethernet zero adapter. So for this, we'll set the L host adapter to tunnel zero or, or the adapter if you're using the open VPN connection. If not, you'll just set it to whatever your IP address is. So for example, if we run if config, we'll see that our tunnel zero is this. If you don't have a tunnel zero adapter, it'll just be set with the ethernet zero IP address. So it'll work either way, tunnel zero or the actual IP address. And then the L port can be anything else really. For L port is set by default to all fours, 4444, 4444. And in a real engagement, you may want to change this to a more common port, just because usually ports like this, ports that aren't really common, usually get blocked out by the firewall. So in case you don't get a shell back, it may be blocked by a firewall. So go ahead and try to use like a port 80 or FTP SSH port, something more common that usually doesn't get blocked or an open port already inside the organizational network. And in case we wanted to change the payload, we can run show payloads. And this is this will list all the different payloads that we can go ahead and use with this exploit. And then we can leave this context by using the back command and we're no longer and we're no longer going to see the internal blue prompt anymore. So if we do show options, we no longer have an exploit set or a payload set. So we can go ahead and just clear that. If we want to learn more about this exploit and how it works, we will type info. This is going to give you information about the payload, the different targets, whatever the basic options that are already set, what they do, 
the description, and different references that we can refer to. And if we wanted to search for an eternal blue exploit, but we didn't know the exact path for the exploit, we would just do a search eternal blue. And this will show you all the different modules or matching different op or different options that we could we could potentially use um, to exploit our target system. And then you'll see the different ranks. So you'll see an average rank, a normal rank, and a great rank. Usually you'll want to choose a rank that's that's set to average normal or great anything below that usually will have issues so we'll go ahead and set our payload you can either copy the full path or you can just set the number right over here so this column this number column to make it easy you can just use zero and it'll set the same path as you can see the eternal blue path over here and back to the rankings the excellent ranking is when an exploit will never crash when you try to run it. Great ranking, same thing. Good ranking, normal ranking, average, low ranking, and manual ranking. And if you want to learn more about this, you can go ahead and click that link, but we won't go into depth. And you can direct the, the search function using different keywords to search as a type and a platform. So if we wanted to search for results to only include auxiliary modules for Telnet, we could do that. So we would do Let's go ahead and hit back. We could go ahead and do search for the type of module will be the auxiliary module and we'll search for anything Telnet. And this will list you all the Telnet, all the Telnet options in the auxiliary module. So how would you search for a module related to Apache? You would just search Apache. Who provided the auxiliary scanner SSH slash SSH underscore login module? Let's go ahead and do info, and then we'll just go ahead and copy this path and then paste it inside our Metasploit terminal. And if we scroll up, we'll see this was provided by, by Todd B at Metasploit.com. So we'll just go ahead and do Todd B. On to task number four, working with the modules. So we already set, we already started our VM, so we don't have to wait. Once we exploit the vulnerability, we'll get either a interpreter prompt as shown here or the shell on the target system. So usually if you set the interpreter payload, you'll get a interpreter shell and it, to enter the actual command shell, you'll have to type in shell and then you'll be prompted with the shell on to the actual target system. In this screenshot over here, we're going to see print options related to the exploit chosen, the eternal blue one. The show option output varies. For example, our host and our post, our port, must be set for this exploit, for, but for the post exploitation module, only the session ID, only the session ID needs to be set. A session is a connection to the target system for post exploitation. And then we can set everything with our host. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just search for eternal blue. If we don't know the path, use zero, then go to show options. Let's go ahead and set the R host to our target IP, which is 10.10.127.103. And then let's go ahead and keep the R port. And then let's go ahead and set L host to tunnel zero. And then everything else looks good. And if we wanted to, we can override these parameter settings that we just set by running the unset command. So, so if we went ahead and did unset all, this will unset everything that we set. So our host is blank now, and the payload that we that was set automatically was removed. But you can use set g command, the set g command to set values that will be used across all the modules. The set g command is used like the set command. The difference between the two commands is that set will use the module, or you can switch to another module that will need to be set again. And the set g command allows you to set the value so it can use so it can be used by default across the different modules. Now that we have our exploit set, let's go ahead and actually exploit the target system. So set our host to the target IP and then set our host to tunnel zero. And then we can go ahead and use exploit command to run this exploit or we can use the run command. And then if we're using the exploit command, we can use a dash Z parameter to run the exploit and then background the session as soon as it runs. Or we can also use the check command just to see 
just to run a quick check before actually exploiting the target to see that it actually is vulnerable without without actually attempting to exploit the target. So let's go ahead and hit run. And now you see it's going to go ahead and go through its thing. Now it's going to go and run through the exploit. If it fails, you may have to run it a couple more times. So just be on the lookout for that. And now we can see that we did in fact get a interpreter shell. And if we hit shell, we see that we are actually inside the target VM. And who am I? Now we're system, so we have complete control of the target machine. Now back to the questions. How would you set the L port value to 666? To 6666, set L port 6666. How would you set the global value for our host to this IP address? We'll do set G our host to 10.10.19.23. What command would you use to clear a set payload? You'll go ahead and do unset and then payload. What command do you use to proceed with the exploitation phase? You'll run exploit, but you can also run just you can also use you can also use the command run. Task number five, the summary. As we've seen, Metasploit is a powerful tool. Um, we we had a little introduction and a little walkthrough. Um, I hope this was enough exposure to kind of get the hang of Metasploit, how it works. Uh, Metasploit is powerful, and the more you the more the more hands-on experience you get with Metasploit, the more comfortable and the better you'll be with the tool. I hope you all enjoyed this room. I'll see you in the next video.